In this video, I'm going to teach you how to scan the aorta. The basic technique is simple, but how do you deal with the patient who's challenging or who has a lot of bowel gas? Let's learn how. Okay, let's do a scan of the aorta. First of all, put lots of jelly on the belly. Next, feel the xiphoid process. The xiphoid marks where the diaphragm uh, is inside the body, and that's where the abdominal aorta begins. Once I feel the xiphoid, I put the probe right up against the xiphoid, and then I bring the probe up completely perpendicular. So here you see the probe at an angle, and as I bring it up to perpendicular, the aorta will come into view. Once the probe's on the belly, you'll want to try to identify the vertebral body. That's a white echogenic line with a shadow behind it. The aorta is a, a round vessel directly in front of the vertebral body, and it's not compressible. As I apply pressure, it's not getting smaller. Screen left of the aorta, you can actually see the IVC, which is compressible. I'll, I'll identify the aorta on the screen, and once I'm sure I see it, I'll follow it down. Notice as I move, I'm sliding the probe, but I'm not changing the angle. I keep the probe completely perpendicular to the patient. You won't get better images by moving the probe left and right like this. You want to keep the probe perpendicular to the patient. Now I start following the aorta all the way down. There's the bifurcation. One, two. One, two. Sometimes when you're scanning the aorta, you'll run into a, an area of gas, like right here. If you're in the proximal aorta, you can ask the patient to take a big breath in. Can you breathe in for me, please? And the gas will move towards her feet. Then you keep scanning, and you run into the same patch of gas again right here. Can you breathe out for me? And now the aorta will reappear. And you can finish your scan. Gas in the mid or distal aorta is better dealt with using compression. The way to apply compression is to push straight back, like I'm doing here, a slow steady pressure and count to 10. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If the gas still hasn't cleared, I release the pressure and then I slowly press again. Here we have an aorta that's difficult to see, but with compression, the image becomes clearer and clearer. Sometimes there'll be a pocket of gas that you can't deal with by compression, and an effective technique is to try and move laterally and then rock the probe or angle the probe back towards the midline, keeping the aorta in view the entire time. This is particularly useful uh, for getting around gas at the umbilicus or if the patient has a piercing at the navel. Here's what it looks like on the screen. We move the probe laterally. We can still see the aorta and then I rock the probe, so we're still looking at it, but now from an angle. Let's start again and do the whole scan. Find the xiphoid, bring the probe up to perpendicular, and slide down following the aorta. Make sure you keep the probe in the same position all the time. Nice scan! The aorta is normally less than 3 centimeters anterior to posterior. This can usually be estimated from the hash marks on screen right. This aorta is about 4 centimeters. Even aneurysms under 5 centimeters can rupture, although it's less common. When there's atheroma or thrombus in the aorta, you have to be careful not to measure the false lumen. Always measure from outer wall to outer wall. This aorta looks pretty big. Should we call vascular? 
Remember, the diagnosis of ruptured AAA is a clinical one. Point-of-care ultrasound can only tell you whether there's an aneurysm present or not. Okay, now you know what to do. Let's get scanning.